What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR and in this video I'm going to be talking about The Last of Us HBO series which premieres in about a week. Now the directors of the show, Neil Druckmann and Craig Mazin, we know Neil Druckmann is the uh, one of the writers and directors of, of, of the game, um, the original uh, Last of Us game, and Craig Mazin is a highly revered um, director. He's directed some other HBO shows. Um, they revealed in an interview um, about one particular change in the TV show ad adaptation that fans of the game, including myself, are not exactly fond of, right? And the change they made is that airborne spores will not be in the TV show. Now, before I get into this, let me just say that I'm not gonna act like I know what the best choices are when it comes to directing a TV show, right? Obviously, Neil and Craig know more than me, so I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt, especially, um, especially based on one thing he said in his statement, which I'm going to get to. So I don't necessarily agree with this choice, and I don't think it, it makes sense based on Last of Us lore and Last of Us canon, which I'm also going to talk about, but I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt based on one thing, right? So let me read Craig and Neil's statement. So this is Craig's, sorry about that, actually this is Craig's quote. I believe so it says obviously there are some big things that we know we're keeping of course but then there are challenges from the game to the show that had to be considered for instance little things like the spores in the game you encounter spores and you need to put a gas mask on in the world that we're creating and that's that's the specific part of his statement that I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt of, out, out of uh, for and he because he said in the world that they're creating which I think implies that there is something that works in the world of the TV show that doesn't work in the world of the video game, which forces them to remove spores. I think that's what he's saying, but I can't necessarily picture exactly how the TV show forces you to remove spores because it doesn't because it just doesn't work or doesn't doesn't make sense. But that's what I think he's essentially saying. And I'm going to get to that uh, a little bit later also. Um, but yes, he said in the world that we're creating, if we put spores in the air, it would pretty it would be pretty clear that they would spread around everywhere and everybody would have to wear a mask all the time and probably everybody would be completely infected by that point. So we've challenged ourselves to come up with an interesting new way for the fungus to spread, but mostly I think we just connected with the soul and spirit of the game. Now here's what Neil Druckmann said. Uh, Craig is right. There are certain additions that we made to the show, which I really liked. We wanted to avoid making a zombie show. We have the clickers, which help separate us by grounding them in one way. But also, they're such interesting, weird beings, um, and they use echolocation to find their way around. But with the more recently infected, we had a lot of conversation about what that vector could look like because there are certain things from the game that we took away. The game had spores in the air and people had to wear gas masks. And we decided decided early on that we didn't want to do that for the show. Eventually, those conversations led us to these tendrils. And then just thinking about how there's a passage that happens from one infected to another like a fungus does, and it could become a network that is interconnected. It became very scary to think that they're all working against us in a unified way which was a concept that I really like and got developed into the show. So instead of spores, right? So instead of spores, there will be tendrils. And what I believe Neil is essentially alluding to, I could be wrong on this, but I think what he's alluding to is the tendrils will serve like a hive mind or like a network that links all of the uh, all of the infected or like kind of the mind of the infected. It's essentially a way to communicate um, between all of the infected or some of the infected. Now, in real life, tendrils are just like plant like appendages that typically grow in like a spiraled form. You've probably seen them in real life um, or in on some type of plant life. Right. So while i don't think this is a terrible idea i don't know i don't really understand why it has to replace spores and here's why craig's uh uh here's here's why his reason doesn't really make sense to me it doesn't really hold up right now for me 
This could change when the show comes out. So here's the thing. In the Last of Us world, in the game, the spores can only thrive in dark, condensed areas, typically, right? Mainly dark areas where there is very limited airflow. Sunlight and fresh air kills or dilutes the spores. This is why in the game, you've never really seen dead bodies spreading fungus to surfaces outside. Every time you've seen these, you know, these, these dead infected, where they're like kind of fused into the wall and you see the fungus spreading from them, it's in a dark, damp area where there's no sunlight because they cannot exist there, right? So, you know, you'll never see those bodies, you'll see the bodies outside, but you'll never see them spreading fungus to the surfaces outside. You know, the, the wildlife outside has become overgrown and, and that dominates, but not the fungus. Some people think that, you know, the fact that the spore can infest one room, right, in the game, and you'll have your mask on, and then you'll move to another room, and you could take the mask directly off, is some type of plot hole, right? Because the spores can connect to your clothes, right? I'm And I'm gonna kind of touch on that when I, you know, get into a little bit how the spores, uh, just about how the spores have spread and, and how the disease, the infection spread and everything like that, but they can attach to surfaces, right? So people say, well, how can it attach to surfaces? If it can, you know, if you can be in a room full of it, full of these spores and then move to another room, take off your mask and just be completely fine, it doesn't make sense. But as I said, they only really survive in certain conditions. Now, the po you could pretty much say the potency and the concentration of the spores decrease in certain areas um, to the point where they're no longer strong enough to cause infection. You can think of this almost like the same way bacteria works. Bacteria is all around us, but in small, you know, trace am amounts, it's completely harmless. The so this detail of spores and how they works in the condition in the conditions they need to to live based on the game this is based on you know canon from the game is why his reasoning doesn't really make sense to me but as i said i'm willing to give them the benefit of the, of the doubt because he specifically said in the world that we're we're creating and we need to see that world first when the show comes out so i think for anybody watching this video who may not be familiar, who may come across this video, may not be familiar with The Last of Us game and the canon and the lore and everything like that. I think it it's, it's a good thing to kind of go through the details and go through the facts, right? Because some people may even need a, a refresher. So let's talk about exactly how the spores work and, and how cordyceps work and, and, and everything like that. Let's do a brief review, shall we? So the cordyceps brain and function, CBI or just cordyceps, um, here's how it originated, right? They originated from South America and it traveled through, through humans by infected crops that the humans ate. Now, humans, here, here, here's a few key details that people need to know, right? Humans that have been exposed to the mutated strain of the infection, those are the humans that will be begin that will begin to turn. Not everybody who's infected will actually turn to the different stages of the infections that, that we know of, right? Some will actually die. The ones who are infected by the mutated strain will start to turn and go through the four stages and the, well, five stages technically, but we only learn about the fifth stage in The Last of Us Part Two. The four uh, initial stages are uh, runner, stalker, clicker, bloater, or shambler, and then rat king is the fifth. Here's the thing that I actually just learned, right? The the bloater and the shambler are in the same phase. They are the same stage. They are just branched um, mutations. They are branched evolutions from the clicker. The clicker either becomes the shambler or the bloater. I actually thought the shambler was the evolution of the bloater because we're first introduced to the shambler in Last of Us Part Two. There are no shamblers in Last of Us Part One. The shambler and the bloater are just branched evolutions um, from the clicker. A lot. I don't. I don't. I actually didn't know that until like about a week ago. I don't know if some people knew that. So two, those two de details I wanted to highlight. Just because you are bitten doesn't mean you will actually go through these stages. And the shambler and the bloater are actually the same 
uh, fourth stage of the infection and the fifth and final one as of right now, because there's a p- potential for Last of Us Part 3, the, le- the Rat King is the fifth stage. Now, obviously, each stage is more dangerous than the last. And going back to how I explained about how the fungus grows and starts to deliver spores, uh, after an infected person dies, the fungus will continue to grow and consumes the body's mass, right? And it will start to spread that, that fungus and release spores. The body will start to fuse on surfaces. That's why you'll see some infected fused to desk, fused to walls and things and, and things like that. And they'll start to, you know, uh, release the uh, the spores and, and, and release the fungus all across the walls. That's why, for example, in the abandoned build, building in Last of Us Part Two with Abby, I think that's the that's the I think that part with Abby is where you see the most advanced stages of uh of of just fungus growing overall and also in the uh, basement of of the hospital that's where you see the like kind of ground zero essentially of um of the infection hospitals most hospitals are probably going going to be ground zero of infection because that's where the first cases were brought that's why you saw the rat king all the way down in the basement of the hospital and that's why there probably isn't um there probably isn't a lot of rat kings out there because for their the rat king i believe is over 10 years of of infection evolution i think that's a, the that's the amount of time it, it takes it might be longer than that actually bloaters bo- bloaters and shamblers might be 10 years and past 10 years i i think might actually be uh might actually be rat kings that's why you don't you don't see um, see them that often. Yeah, I think it's actually around maybe 15, 20 years because the timeline, if the timeline is, is, is right, yeah, there, there. if it was 10 years, you would actually see a lot more Rat Kings if I'm remembering uh, that correctly. So that said, that's why people, you know, obviously ha- have to use gas mask and everything like that. And both the spores and the fruiting body, the spreading body, die quickly when exposed to sunlight. So it limits the danger that they present. So that's why, as I said, the canon and Craig's reasoning as to why spores don't exist doesn't really line up for me and doesn't really make sense. Um, But maybe when we watch the show, as I said, it will. But here's another problem that it presents. It removes major story beats, especially in The Last of Us Part 2. And they said... The Last of Us part, this first season of this show is going to cover the entirety of The Last of Us part one, which is kind of questionable um, to begin with. It seems like there, it, I don't know, just in my mind, 10 episodes is not enough to ke- to really uh, show all the events that happen in, in The Last of Us part one. And then the next season is going to be Last of Us part two. And in part two, things such as Ellie revealing to Dina when they're in the subway that she is immune um, by breathing, by breathing in uh, the spores because her mass breaks. Um, Ellie at the hospital when she's uh, confronting the WLF and Nora, and when she drops down uh, in, in, into the into the basement, and Nora realizes that Ellie is breathing in in spores, and and it's revealed to her, oh, you're that girl. Um, Joel's conversation with Ellie about keeping her mask on so she doesn't reveal to anybody that you know she's actually immune. And just overall, the fact that Ellie uses spores as a combat advantage in several different scenarios. So all those type of things are kind of removed. Ellie can still take advantage of the fact that she uh, is immune. Um, She does it in other ways. Uh, You know, she doesn't. Of course, infected can still technically kill her, like if they just bite out her carotid. But she doesn't have to worry about simple bites or, you know, things, things like that. So. Those situations will will be removed, and I don't know how how I really feel about that. I'm just worried. I am worried about the show. You know, um, I I was kind of my positivity before this was probably like seventy five percent, and you know little these you know little things that we learned probably dropped it incrementally. But now I would probably say my excitement with with the changes I hear and certain things I see probably sixty percent. Once again, still reserving judgment for when the show comes out in about one week. So 
that's my video. Um, let me know what y'all think about this. I plan to do these these type of videos for each episode, you know, really getting deep into it and, re and recapping. Um, I'm not sure the level of uh, editing I'm going to, to do uh, in this video. I wanted to do some visual aids, but I might not have time. Um, so yeah, let me know if y'all want me to do, if y'all enjoy these videos and want me to do more videos talking about The Last of Us lore and, and the canon and, and the finer details. And uh, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and uh, follow me on Twitter. And I'll catch y'all on the next video. All right, I'm out of here. Peace.